Good afternoon or good morning, depending where you are. Uh, my name is Simon Shackleton, Director of District CMS and Doghouse Agency. We are pleased to be sponsoring today's session titled Improving the Content Editor Experience in Drupal. Here at Doghouse, we've spent a lot of time improving Drupal's admin UI for our district CMS distribution, looking through, uh, through looking through, sorry, through simplifying content authoring workflows, admin usability, and visually updating components where possible. It's a general uh, ongoing business activity. So personally today, I'm looking forward to the session. Today runs for about 45 minutes, consisting of 30 minute presentation, and we should have about 10 minutes for Q&A afterwards. Please add your questions to live Q&A during the session and Vlad will address these afterwards. So jumping straight in. It's my pleasure to introduce Vladimir Rudikov. Known as Vlad, he is an absolute stalwart of the Drupal community for many, many years. He helps maintain over Drupal, uh, sorry, over 30 Drupal modules, which is an astonishing amount. Plus he's a maintainer of Drupal, uh, sorry, Bootstrap four and five Drupal themes. Provides free quarterly Drupal community training sessions and runs a monthly Brisbane Drupal meetup. As a GitLab hero, this year he's running a series of Drupal GitLab collaboration workshops with the next one scheduled for September. He's a founder of Tomato Elephant Studio in Brisbane. What a resume, Vlad. If I could afford you, I would definitely hire you. Without further ado, mate, I'll hand you over to Vlad. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Simon. Uh, and so Big honor to be uh, presented by uh, Dog House. They do a lot of our community. They do a lot of um, for Drupal in Asia Pacific and Australia. And I really want to thank them and all the sponsors who actually came out this year and sponsored the event. Um, in uh, current times, we are all kind of looking away to you know bring the best of the, of the both worlds in terms of not being able to see each other face to face and also trying to organize something as engaging as possible. I think great effort on uh, behalf of all the sponsors and all the volunteers. So thank you very much for them. And also thank you for everyone who jumped in to see this session. Uh, so you can actually put the questions inside the uh, Q and A window on your screen, and uh, feel free to uh, we we will address them in the end of the session. So you already heard enough about me, but I just wanted to uh, uh, clarify one thing. I am still a Drupal site builder. I started working with Drupal a number of years ago as a site builder, and I still is. The obviously the size and the scale of the projects. Uh, increased dramatically, uh, but my day-to-day -day work is still, even when I'm an architect, I'm a Drupal site builder. And that's the perspective I'm gonna uh, talk about it today. Okay, so uh, today session is a 30 minute session. So we'll cut at 30 minutes where we are, and then we'll go on to Q and A. So again, uh, feel free to put your questions in. They will be read in the end of the session. Or you can pin me later in a one-to-one -one chat. I'm happy to hang around and chat about the topic. So today we're going to talk about the state of the web uh, in 2021. Uh, we're going to talk about web challenges that we're facing as a web builders. We're going to talk about Drupal theming in 2021. And we're going to talk about Drupal Bootstrap 5 theme and the way forward. Uh, the way uh, I see it and what we need to do. So let's talk about state of the web. Uh, back in December 2018, I was given a presentation called uh, To Drupal or Not To Drupal, A Closer Look at Wix and WordPress. I uh, took a Wix, which is a platform for building a website within your browser, uh, mostly for brochure websites, but then again, uh, that was almost three years ago. And then I look at the WordPress, which was on the brink, I think, releasing version, major version five. Uh, so also um, WordPress was, again, number one uh, content management system. And uh, there is a video there. I'm not going to 
go deep into this session. Uh, it's available, but there are a few uh, outcomes of this session that I uh, kind of highlight. Number one, uh, Wix was great for prototyping. So our advice, and that's exactly what I did for with Tomato Elephant Studio website and Drupal Camp Byron Bay website. Uh, I built them in Wix, uh, kept them in Wix for about a year, and then eventually migrated them into Drupal. Two, content editing back then was um, the best using WordPress, especially when it comes to media management and handling the images and media files. We all know Drupal made a big leap in this area in the last three years. Uh, so uh, things really shifted. Uh, and uh, I also concluded that the um, some more intricate functionality-wise, like web forms, uh, Drupal was the best. Um, in my opinion, still is. So something that was a bit more complex and more tricky, uh, you can see why uh, just following this presentation, but this is what uh, I wanna highlight before I go into the stats. So this screenshot I made in December 2018, just before the presentation, and we can see the Drupal sits uh, right at the number three, just behind the PHP. Uh, two other PHP content management system, WordPress, which sits at 52%, and Joomla, which was sitting at about 5.3%, uh, and Drupal sitting at 4.1%. And then you can see there were uh, Magento, which is e-commerce and Shopify, and then there was Wix and, Wix and Squarespace and a few others along the way. So just keep that statistics in mind, and let's roll back to today, which is August uh, 2000. 21. Uh, there is a bit of a different uh, view of the world. And if you follow the statistics, it was kind of interesting to see since the beginning of 2020 how things changed. Uh, let's have a look what we actually currently have here. If you can't find Drupal, it's actually right on the last line, which is uh, number nine, still in top 10. Pretty good. You can see the numbers change significantly. So let's see which alternatives uh, pop up on this list in the last uh, two, almost three years. So WordPress still number one, but WordPress uh, infrastructure grew so big that the author of the whatcms.org uh, decided to actually split it into a multiple things. So there is a standalone WooCommerce offering, which is a commerce offering for WordPress. There is WP Bakery and Elementor, which are specific site builders, which are currently environment inside the WordPress where you can put in. So WordPress, as you can see, takes four out of nine positions uh, and really, really dominates the market. So Joomla still sits at number two, and you can actually see it gained uh, almost a percent from um, in three years, which is good to see. And actually, congratulations to Joomla. They just did one major release, Joomla 4, a couple of days ago. So still sits strong. Uh, uh, me, personally, I know there's not many mentioning of Joomla these days. But again, as a content management system of choice, it's still going strong, according to the statistics. So then we're getting our. Uh, then we get in our software as a service cloud offerings, which is Wix and Squarespace. Uh, those things you cannot download to your machine. You cannot move between the hostings. You have to use the hosting provided. And uh, then you jump into your browser, as we will do today, and you'll uh, uh, modify your content and you modify your structure. And of course, there are commerce offering, which is a WooCommerce part of the um, WordPress environment, and Shopify, which is another software as a service offering that became really, really popular in the last two years, as uh, we see a lot of shift from face-to-face uh, -face sales to online sales. Uh, in Australia, particularly, uh, Shopify is responsible for a lot of uh, small shops uh, moving towards the platform to sell their goods. And I can see that uh, from personal experience. Okay, so uh, after looking at this statistic, the goal for today's session is uh, 
how to bring site builder back to Drupal. Dries mentioned it today uh, in an opening note, and he said, we're losing the low end of the market, and we'll see it with Drupal 7, I guess, more prominently. Uh, we are losing uh, these uh, single site builders, or as they used to be called, mom and pop shops. Uh, we've been losing them since uh, Drupal 8 was introduced because it was much more complex, much more enterprise-oriented system. Uh, but back to the goal of the session is how we can get this particular site builder who maybe doesn't have enough knowledge of writing PHP code, tweak templates, and bring them back into Drupal. So web challenges, web challenges in 2021. What your average um, uh, site builder does these days? So it's probably going to be related something to the uh, pandemic that's currently happening around the world. Here's a screenshot of the Twitter feed of the local Queensland government and doing the daily statistics. Right, so this is an image that was placed on social medias to just provide the information about that. And we see that everywhere. Even if we go back to our you know, uh, single site builder, a lot of them had to put the COVID updates. Not necessarily straight away, but there was uh, something where they would go, oh, we need to know that the shop is closed, or we need to let know that the hours have changed, or we need to know that our supply stock is low, something like that. So I, I thought, well, I'll go straight to the government. I'm looking at those statistics daily. Uh, so maybe how easy we can do something like that in Drupal, right? So first, we need to replicate the report. Like, let's keep the content management system uh, agnostic. And uh, I pick up the tool that I usually go to, which is a Bootstrap 5, one uh, the most popular uh, front-end framework in the world, containing a bunch of elements you can use from layout to a specific form builders. Uh, I pick up the report that I found on Twitter, uh, and then I basically went and say, OK, so what do I need to do? In Drupal, I have our create basic page. Uh, for. So I need to know the HTML to insert the HTML. Maybe it looks something like this. So that took me a bit of time uh, to put it together, something that looked relatively similar. And now it's no longer an image, but the content, put the numbers in, uh, copy HTML as we do in uh, WYSIWYG Editor, make sure I can see how it looks in WYSIWYG Editor before publishing it and save it. So uh, other states provide uh, different types and different styles of statistics. And uh, again, exactly what I showed show you before, I'll do it now as well with the live demo. So let's say I want to create a basic page. Here's my example two. I have my WYSIWYG editor set up. I have to go and find my content, which I really. So here you, you can probably see the stats. So I copy my HTML, copy paste it here. And I'm using the theme that actually allows the theme, um, theme uh, styles inside the WYSIWYG editor. So I can see how it looks. Uh, I can highlight, I can change the number if I really want to. So modify the content inside it. And then go and save it. So here's our node with the statistics provided with something I prepared before, right? So something easy. But again, it took me a while to go and uh, with the knowledge of uh, uh, 
bootstrap framework with the knowledge of styles and tools they have uh, actually go and create it create the report something like this all like this as i showed you before uh, then copy pasted it uh, into drupal now one of the issues with drupal is that We need to know a lot of things before we would be able to do that out of the box. So in many cases, we need to know what a content type is, possibly a menu system, how to work with the menu system or URL routing system, how to create. Uh, we need to know the basic concept of publishing, which is again, not a big thing, but you need to know them. Uh, we need to know about text formats. So actually working with Drupal, you know that you go and copy some examples of the web. Even if you have CSS and JavaScript, uh, text format might strip all the divs you use, all the classes you use, or IDs you use, stuff like that. You also need to know the concept of fields once we go beyond something like title and a body, uh, which, again, uh, can be uh, very tricky, especially when you sell someone Drupal for a basic edit and saying, here's how easy it is to do. So, and let's ask ourselves a question. In 2021, how easy is it to build a simple website? So I pick up two examples. One is the Google Sites and another one is Wix. So I'll actually gonna go and jump into Google Sites. If it's not gonna work, then I have some screenshots available here. So if we're talking about a band like Drupal South, um, let's jump here. Now, straight away, once you go to a Google uh, Sites, you see the uh, you can see the number of templates available. Uh, in Drupal, it might represent themes, but again, even with themes, you you need to have a certain knowledge. Where here, I uh, start using Google Sites, the new version of Google Sites, maybe a couple of weeks ago. I can see I can create blank event portfolio help send a project team. Again, nothing's stopping us from, uh, nothing is stopping us from having something like that in Drupal. I have a preset, clicking on the event. Let's say we want to put the website for Drupal South conferences. Click on the event, go to the editor, put the dates. Conference name, you get the idea. So, and off we go with actually building the website already. You can see there are a few things that uh, we are lacking in Drupal that's already there fundamentally, like an image in the background, or like a preset content, or maybe a built in menu. We have it, we just didn't put it together and present it nicely to, uh, to a site builder to someone who possibly might be struggling with the idea of putting that page all together. Uh, you can see there is also a few things available. Yes, and Dries was talking about it today, a lot of this content is static content, so you cannot easily, there is integration with um, database like Google Sheets, but you cannot easily like bring the images and stuff like we do it in Drupal, wrap it up in a view, uh, and off we go. But if I would be talking to an audience who have no idea what view is, block is, they would probably look at me like, it's just too complex. I'll go and make my you know, stuff who is not working these days. Use Google Sites and uh, put together manual uh, schedule of the event. Change the image and off we go. Uh, schedule is already here again. Something simple like that can be easily provided with one click, and we would be able to just to go and uh, um, edit the schedule, list the speakers. Again, a simple list, nothing too outside of the box, but really, really great tool to bring the site builder back saying, hey, here you go with one click. I gave you four pages. You already can start editing. Uh, your next Drupal camp event, WordCamp event, uh, Joomla event. Why not? It's already there. You just need to go do these three things. And 
you can build this stuff in. So I think one of the most fundamental uh, tools to give to a site builder is actually have some presets. Okay, so this went pretty well. Skipping all the websites and now talking about another tool called Wix. So again, Wix site, I mentioned them before. I built a Drupal Camp Byron Bay website on Wix. We can look at that or we'll just go through uh, the creation process here as well. Again, because we have a limited time and we only have now time to, to Drupal, I'll quickly show you what Wix allows you to do. So they actually give you categories. And then you can either let Wix um, create website for you or go and edit the specific template. Again, they give you event templates. Here's the conference. I'll click edit. Would be very similar interface to Google Sites. And uh, then we can go and start putting the dates in, start putting the um, conference name in, for example, here. We can go edit text, say, no. And a nice and classy editor. Obviously, this is a proprietary company getting paid to do that. Uh, so very fancy looking editor. But saying that nothing stops us to providing something like this as a preset. Very similar thing. Conference speakers, past events, right? Things that are pretty much built in for the conference website are there. So now to put it together though, uh, yet again, we are facing the fact that the fields, uh, view modes, blocks, use, and other co concepts that Drupal uh, developers are familiar with are not necessarily there to be given to site builders saying, okay, you need to know those things to put together presenters and sessions and um, uh, make sure that the session look differently and it all looks nice. So that's another hurdle of actually getting these site builders back to Drupal. Uh, so, and now let's shift our focus to Drupal. Drupal theming in 2021, where are we at, where are we going, and what are we doing? So if we'll uh, look at the themes interface of Drupal, there are two, th two themes that's been there for a while, but they were labeled experimental just because the pure um, amount of work to actually move them to Drupal. And one of them is Olivero, which is nice uh, looking theme responsive. I, a couple of projects uh, I worked on use this as a out of the box theme and they were pretty happy with it. Nice interface. Uh, again, works for the mobile devices and the Clara. Clara is great uh, experimental rep uh, replacement for the seven theme, which is again, more toggled for devices. So there is a lot of work happening there and uh, you know contributing to those projects. Um, we're basically bringing the best for Drupal devs, as well as with something like Olivero, bringing back, uh, bringing something for site builders. Because out of the box, they won't have Bartik. Uh, they will have Olivera, something that you can sell to the client, as I like to talk. Uh, now, about the Drupal Bootstrap and where I see it's going to tackle those issues I talked before. So Drupal uh, Bootstrap 5, it's a Bootstrap 5 theme uh, with a built-in library. Uh, and it's not the only theme that's available for Drupal. Uh, using Bootstrap 5 themes. On the bottom of the Bootstrap 5 page, I have other themes that I use in either Bootstrap 3 or Bootstrap 4, and there, there is about half a dozen of them, so you can go and check it out. But by building Bootstrap 4 and experiencing uh, gaining like uh, thousands of usages and feedback from people, I, I, I realize we need something a bit more simpler. So I'll just go into the backend of uh, bootstrap was logged out. I'm going to go 
Oh, in the. So Bootstrap 5 was enabled here. And if I'll go to the settings of Bootstrap 5, I can see a number of things already here, a number of things we're working on to tackle. So I'm going to close everything here. I'm going to talk about those things. So uh, we have a few elements that we use for all the themes. But a few things that I think are great are the stuff we brought in into Bootstrap 4 and Bootstrap 5 themes. So the first one is a style guide. This is an adopted style guide from um, uh, Bootstrap. But once we actually recompile the theme, so this is for developers, once we recompile the theme, we can actually run an accessibility checker on uh, all the elements that basically Bootstrap gives from tables to uh, images, contrast ratios, color of the buttons, all the elements, uh, including the form verification, uh, including the alerts, uh, including the badges, uh, all other elements. We can actually run accessibility on this page while recompiling the SAS and CSS and uh, check if accessibility is passing or not. And maybe we need to change one color that really helped. And with Booster 5, we also not only have uh, left to right, we also have right to left cheat sheet, which we can uh, have a look and see how it's uh, done in the parts of the world where they use um, right to left. So the next thing is uh, being there for a while, and not only in Bootstrap 4 thing, but Bootstrap thing, which was an uh, inspiration for some of the elements here. We can control different elements. How controllable uh, do we want it fix width content or the full width content? Do we want to apply a specific Bootstrap themes, like a light or dark theme? Uh, so that's already available in the body options, navigation bar options. You can change it from dark to light with a few interface clicks. Same as a footer. We can apply a specific styles there. Now, the new work that we're working on, uh, uh, it's uh, text formats and CK editor, something that with one click, you would be able to do exactly what I did before, just creating these styles. And uh, we will provide one click uh, ability to create a particular uh, text formats. And that's what we're working now. Block class integration. So when we actually uh, go on the front page of the Drupal cells uh, demo that I created, you can see that some menus, for example, sitting on top of the search. This all can be easily done with block class module and align it properly. So we're building integration where we can highlight straight out of interface uh, all the blocks that are available and move them around using bootstrap classes. Again, something that we're currently working on and the demo is in progress, but that will allow people to just point and click and change the way they display specific blocks. Now, the probably the one thing I was talking about is creating content with one click. So. Uh, it's already in the dev branch of the theme. You can actually go and uh, download it and see three buttons. And you can either create the example, something like that, where it would go and create a basic page, uh, check your uh, text style that it's correct, or you can actually go and create one of the examples. And the goal for the next month is actually to bring all the examples that Bootstrap provide into Drupal. So with one click, you can create something like that. So columns with icons sitting there with the images and with icon grid. So one click, you have a basic page, and you can go from there. And eventually, this will grow into something that's, um, uh, as I said before, something very similar to Wix or to the uh, Google Sites. And uh, there is also ability to create a sub theme from a user interface, which we are, it's already working and we already great feedback about actually building sub themes. But again, something more for developers rather than content creators. So this is a plan for uh, Bootstrap 5 theme. Now, 
Uh, the way forward, uh, the last thing I wanted to touch on is a um, few developments are happening um, in Drupal world. So obviously Drupal 10 is out in less than a year, about in 10 months time, which possibly would bring a CK Editor 5, something that will enhance our ability to control and place the particular elements uh, on the page. And I'm looking forward to that. So those initiatives are happening right now. And I'll tell you in a second how to actually join them and help them. Or you can join um, Bootstrap 5 and help us to do. So there is a Friday contribution sprint that's coming in uh, tomorrow. So you can join in. I, I will be there like just mucking around and adding, working on those things that I mentioned today. Uh, Drupal Slack, official Drupal Slack. Uh, Google how to get there if you're not there. And uh, Bootstrap channel is where we're hanging around talking about all things Bootstrap. So Bootstrap 5 theme issue queue on Drupal.org. And uh, we're also planning a September mentoring uh, for free, probably one or two hours every week, starting second week of September, keeping out Drupal Brisbane uh, meetups. We're going to announce it there and, of course, on the groups. To, uh, Drupal.org. So uh, Dries mentioned today uh, about the bootstrap. So he said we're great for developers, but we're also great for uh, less technical people. And I completely agree with that. And I think Drupal is a great tool, but I think we can do better. And uh, as we saw before, the competition as such, if we can call them a competition, uh, actually ramping up that aspect of the spectrum where we uh, single site builders or store owners or shop owners who are actually trying to get and maybe help their business to get somewhere looking for this extra help to be able to you know maybe spin off the website by themselves uh, that's pretty much my presentation about how um, the state of uh, triple interfaces and how we can uh, improve them. Uh, do we have any questions? Thanks, bud. That was uh, great, and obviously very timing with uh, Drupal's. Uh, sorry, Dries's um, talk this morning, which unfortunately I missed. Uh, we've just had a couple of questions come in, uh, which I haven't read. So I might just start off with a question from me, mate. So I just want to talk about Drupal's competition. So um, historically, it's been WordPress and Joomla sort of print prize sort of era. Um, we then saw SharePoint, uh, Sitecore, Adobe, Circus, or 2013. Is it safe to say um, it's Wix and Squarespace right now, or or do you think uh, they are never going to compete at an enterprise level? Uh, thanks for the question, Simon. Uh, I think uh, we don't really have a competition from the perspective of the what we have on our hands and Dries mentioned it before uh, but also all of those systems basically do chip away from drupal uh user base uh beat enterprise systems like adobe that's really expanding now in australia or uh, wix and squarespace they took um, as you saw the numbers before that took a significant chunk just because how easy it is to build the websites for them i think um we need to embrace the change and uh, just use them in, as an inspiration. Uh, sometimes when the client comes to us and don't know what to do, especially from the um, anonymous user or front-ender perspective, I would just send them to Wix. And I don't consider mm. that a competition. <clears throat> I actually uh, teach them how to use Wix as a prototyping tool. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to have a bit more time to actually investigate a bit more uh, WordPress and the Squarespace and see what they offer that we might take and use. So personally, again, yes and no, but I think they're more of a, you know, the environment we're in rather than the full on competition that we have to eliminate. Yeah, it's funny. I seem to agree. It's, um, our sort of favorite client here at Doghouse is um, my mother's pottery website and uh, she's staring down. <laughs> She's staring down the, uh, you know, Drupal 7 upgrade and, you know, it's cheaper and more efficient for us to move her over to Wix than actually sort of move her to D9, um, which isn't a bad thing at the same time. 
Um, I've had a couple of questions come through. Uh, first one's from Ian Humble. I believe he's the growth manager at District CMS, so must be a good question. Um, Ian's just referencing Pantheon back in 2012, um, we were offering one-click website installations. The question is, why do you think Drupal community hasn't put more effort into one-click installations to generate interest in the Drupal ecosystem? Uh, hi, Ian, by the way. Thanks for the question. Uh, I am keep thinking about it uh, every day. I think partially the answer is the ever-growing and blooming DevOps, um, uh, DevOps and uh, category of developers, I guess, where everyone wants to spin off their version of things in um, their version of things in AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, you name it, DigitalOcean. Uh, everyone is a hosting company these days. But uh, on the other hand, uh, we, we already have one click spin offs. Um, Pantheon does it, Acquia does it, uh, Platform SH does it. Uh, we need more of those. And uh, back in the day when I was doing an interview to go and work for Acquia's, I think they called digital gardens or something where they had exactly weeks. And that was year 2012. Uh, yeah, we seem like as a community, we seem to steer away from those simple things. So what I was talking about is more how we can improve things on the uh, uh, Drupal side, but it's obviously a whole other infrastructure issue where how we can also fight $10 a month WordPress websites where these big companies like GoDaddy come in and they just buy you on the price. They actually support full on uh, WordPress at about 10 bucks. Uh, I, kn I know the price is a you know, comparison and don't quote me on that, but I'm just saying what I see on a WordPress website. Saying that, that gave a lot of boost to WordPress uh, one click uh, installation companies. And again, we are. Uh, uh, environment where we like to, you know, open new business and go for it, and the opportunity is right there. Uh, for me personally, I'm I don't see myself going into a hosting business, but for all DevOps strategists there who are thinking about being entrepreneurial and opening their own company, I think it's a great opportunity to jump on the market and uh, be in the competition. The more hosting company will get, the everyone like will benefit more from it. Mm. Thanks, man. I think it's going to change the landscape, especially for you know some of these smaller Drupal shops that rely on these uh, less complex builds. Historically, um, you know, I think we'll find a lot of those are moving to um, SaaS-based CMSs such as Wix and, and uh, Squarespace and so forth. Um, so, we have got another question from uh, Amy Eastwood. What are the major differences between Bootstrap four and and five? Uh, I have the whole presentation about it, and it's posted on uh, Drupal uh, Tomato Elephant Studio YouTube channel uh, from Brisbane Meetup, and it covers um, a lot of differences between them. I think one of the biggest differences uh, is uh, there's no longer uh, jQuery support, so you don't need to have a jQuery uh, library to build on a bootstrap all uh, JavaScript elements were rebuilt in pure, um, they were rebuilt in pure uh, JavaScript, sorry, just I had a brain freeze. Uh, one of the biggest uh, pushes for me is they actually became fully uh, VGAC2 uh, compatible. So if you run VGAC2, this is accessibility checker that checks your website accessibility on Bootstrap 4. Some of the primary colors they use, they were still not fully accessible. There was a big push of actually making it accessible. And you can see there's a growth in, uh, uh, in accessibility push, which I really like because a lot of front-end frameworks that spin off these days um, ignore uh, two things, testing and accessibility. And I think uh, Bootstrap being you know, significantly more mature than a lot of front-end system does a great job on accessibility without you needing to do anything. This is thousands and thousands of people testing the um, interface elements for accessibility. The number three uh, 
change to uh, Booster 5 is actually uh, mobile first. So the most of the elements are mobile first. Um, even if your client doesn't realize, probably more than 50% of their uh, audience are coming from mobile. And actually having the framework that out of the box squeezes on element and using the modes to actually being able to use and see on a device is a great tool. And uh, I think those three things are where Booster 5 really shines. Oops, so I was on mute there. Thanks, Matt. Um, that's all for the questions that we have. Um, guys, you can sort of drop in the questions into the Q&A, uh, not the discussion forum as well, if anyone has a last question. We've got a few minutes left. Um, my another question from me, so I guess, um, what is the future of Drupal theme, um, sort of front-end wise? Are we sort of staring down the headless enterprise path, or do you think we'll go back to that sort of, um, the way back to solo site builders? The reality is the themes, uh, we really lost a lot of theme builders with Drupal 8. That's the reality. Like I'm not gonna go into why and rediscover some things of that. So we did lose a lot of devs as well. And I can see them who used to contribute to the themes uh, when Drupal 7 was on the peak to now um, it's, very different and new themes are coming out, but they either very niche themes or themes trying to solve one or two issues. I guess with the Booster 5 theme, I wanted to give more power to the people who click through the interface. That's my goal with the Booster 4 and now Booster 5 theme. But at the same time, uh, something that uh, give me as a developer opportunity to uh, quickly bootstrap something. Uh, I tried, uh, I tried uh, other things and they're great, they're big, great things like Radix. Um, but for me, they were overkill in some space. That's why I started Booster 5 themes. So I think we just need more people to build in more themes like, uh, and get back to the level of, well, at least, you know, pre Drupal 8. They don't have to be a great theme. So we just need to have a variety at the moment. Uh, from the top of my head, I can name maybe three or four themes that, you know, popping up here and there and actually start becoming prominent in the community. Saying that, uh, the work that's being done uh, on Drupal 10 and the uh, two themes that I mentioned, which is Olivero and Claro, and Drupal 10 would also have a template. Uh, they would have a starter kit. So rather than... Uh, theme that you can't see that provides a lot of stuff there would be a starter key which you can build things is uh, matt glamman who is one of the drupal developers he also mentioned there's a template builder and template editor he built and i put the link under this presentation to his tweet he is looking at the moment for sponsorship uh, he does a lot of development on php stem uh, but he also built this uh, drupal uh, template builder which basically takes a template, tweak template, opens it in the browser, you can edit the code, save it, and it would save it into your theme. Great concept, and the talks about it were happening for years now. So I think uh, in terms of the theme development, we shifted towards a bit more robust, a bit more developer-oriented. But I think now, using those great innovations, we need to start building up and bringing the amounts in, so a bit more themes to choose from. Fantastic. I think we'll wrap it up there, mate. We have uh, approximately one minute left, so perfect timing. Um, mate, thank you very much. It's obviously a timely, timely subject. I know these presentations take a lot of time to put together, and you're a very, very busy man. Um, so next up, we have lightning talks uh, and roundtable sessions, which start in approximately one minute. So again, thanks, mate, uh, to you, and thanks, everyone, for joining. See ya. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, everyone. Nice.